Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Here we are. It's Thursday. These weeks are rushing by at the moment. Morning, Stel. How you doing, mate? Good morning. I'm all good. And you? Yeah, all good, mate. Sun's out. It Talk is indeed. <laughs> Looking good. Do we have any news from uh, Kay or? No, I not heard from him. Not heard from him. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna contact him. He can. Uh, he can have a couple of days before we start badgering him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, he's fine and dandy, I should imagine. Uh, all yeah. the way over in that sunny Belgium. Uh, lovely place. Went there last year. Um. Right, let's get underway then. Um, first off the bat, um, PBOC set its midpoint at 7.0529. That was just slightly down from the 7.0560 um, they set yesterday. So maybe they're looking to start putting the brakes on um, by not raising that fix uh, midpoint higher than yesterday. But remains to be seen. Still got a bit of a green light for a uh, dollar one, as you can see there, making a new high up at the 7.09 level um, and keeping well bid. Um, the 7.09 to up to 12 is a bit of a level I've been mentioning and keeping an eye on. Um, I'm going to be looking to take some profit on my longs into that zone. Uh, if we get in there, as you can see 61.8 fib there too. Um, and we'll see what we go see what happens but for now um yeah we'll have to see watch those fixes to see if they're going to start fixing them around that level that would be a little bit of an indication they want to slow things down a bit um and over to president xi and he wants to take cooperation with russia to a higher level um so steve keeping up the rhetoric on that side of things uh in terms of relationships with russia um Chinese Commerce Minister Wang is going to meet his uh, US Treasury uh, Thai and uh, Commerce Secretary Raimondo in the US at some point. Uh, so hopefully that can lead to some uh, thawing of frustrated relations. Let's call it that. Um, no dates as far as I can see, but we'll keep an eye on that one. Um, over to the Bank of Japan and Governor Ueda said that the BOJ will patiently sustain easy monetary policy. Um, you'll remember that's a language change um, from persistently sustain easy monetary policy. Uh, one of those small language changes we've been speaking about for some while. Um, so that's uh, the key word or the buzzword in there now. Um, a little change in Japanese terms, it's hawkish, but... Uh, not in uh, real market terms, as you can see from the price of the yen at the moment. Um, he says, we are beginning to see good signs in the economy, but still some distance to stably and sustainably hit the inflation target. Um, that's been reflected by the Japanese government that they raised their overall economic view for the first time since July 2022. Um, a lot of the components in that uh, getting an upgrade in language, <clears throat> uh, which uh, again keeps this little snowball rolling that things are picking up in Japan uh, for the moment anyway. Over to the RBNZ and Governor Orr said rates are restrictive and well above neutral. Um, Rick's Banks Floden said inflation isn't going to disappear by itself. Uh, monetary policy needs to be restrictive for some time ahead. Um, Again, reflecting language that we're going to be hearing from a lot of central banks about getting rates up, getting to a peak and then keeping them there for a long time. And uh, we're all going to be trading the expectations for how long they keep rates up before the cuts come. Um, ECB's Vasile says ECB must still raise interest rates more. Um, ECB's De Guindos says headline inflation will decline rapidly. Um, but services inflation is the most worrying element of the core. Um, and we know that from the PMIs where we're seeing uh, in nearly all cases weaker manufacturing, but stronger services. And with that is com coming stronger inflation in prices in the service sector. Um, and that's making up a big chunk of the core there. Um, now, data from Germany and uh, confirming that uh, Q1 
wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Um, final numbers there, down 0.3 quarter on quarter, year on year down 0.2. Um, we got a bit of a surprise on the flash numbers uh, when that data came out. It was expected to rise and it came in lower. Um, it was expected to improve in the final numbers uh, year on year and on the quarter, but it didn't. Um, so Germany uh, potentially in recession there, uh, as had been, um, well, not predicted by the Bundesbank, who saw modest economic growth, um, but the German government revised down its forecasts. Uh, so we'll see whether there's going to be a pickup in Q2. The IFO yesterday mentioned they see the potential for a bit of stagflation in Germany in Q2. Uh, Spain got some uh, decent PPI news, uh, a negative number on the month, um, which for some reason isn't showing there. Um, the year on year number down a chunk, minus 4.5. That's going to be some good news for the ECB in terms of inflation coming down, particularly in Spain. Um, we're now seeing negative numbers, as mentioned, on the year on years. Uh, month on month, it came in at minus 2% as well. Uh, so all metrics pointing south for that. Um, our old mate Bailey was up yesterday afternoon. Um, I'm going to call him bullshit Bailey from now on because um, he just basically spoke a load of rubbish yesterday. So one of the things he said is our projections show the government will meet its inflation target this year. Um, now what's crazy about this is that we've got the Bank of England now forecasting what government forecasts are going to do and neither can forecast the sun coming up in the morning um so <laughs> complete load of crap from there uh, as far as who's forecasting what um sticking to the forecast he said we will not speculate on where april inflation data leaves us in terms of forecasts um about a third of rate rises have hit the economy now um, and again, he said, our oh, projections show the government will meet its inflation target. And then he added, this is not a good era for forecasting. So <laughs> he's, he's forecasting the government and then he's saying it's not a good era for forecasting. You know what I think about forecasts. What do you think about forecasts, Del? Anything beyond the month forward is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I and don't know. That I, point I, in a moment. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to say, man. And seriously, I, I hear this comment central bankers, central bankers saying, oh, we've been surprised by how inflation has been. Hold on. My my speak, my headphones keep switching off. Sorry, give me one second. Yeah, no worries, mate. Such I need to change them. I need to get them. Um, okay. Uh, so central bank is saying oh we're surprised by how sticky inflation is and uh, or initially they're saying we're surprised by how fast uh, inflation is going up we didn't think it's going to go they're surprised all the time and seriously it's um it's frustrating because they try to forecast they try to anticipate and they are doing pretty much the the opposite of what they should be doing or they get it wrong every time so you know my view on their forecasts is they're rubbish yeah and uh, well, as I say, you know my view on forecasts and uh, I'm going to give it again because since the inflation data, every uh, Tom, Dick and uh, Harriet has been out changing their forecasts for the Bank of England. City now expects two further hikes from the BOE rather than one. And now they don't see any cuts in November where previously they did see a cut. Um, that's following the inflation data. Um, good old Nomura. Big click baiters. Um, they've now raised their expectation for the peak rate for the BOE to 5.25% um, by September 23. Um, they previously saw a 4.75% peak. So they've hiked up 50 pips uh, on that uh, estimate. And this is for September. Uh, Bank of uh, America um, now see 25 pip hikes in June, August and September. They've also raised their terminal rate to 5.25 from 5, uh, 4.75. Deutsche Bank now expects uh, them to deliver 25 pips hikes in August and September, so two hikes from them. And apparently money markets have fully priced in 100 basis points of BOE hikes by December. 
So all the uh, tea leaves being read again, all the prior forecasts getting ripped up and thrown in the bin, as they usually are. Uh, again, this lot, they, they couldn't forecast uh, couldn't forecast the sun coming up in the morning. Um, all it will take is uh, the next CPI report to go the other way and see big soft numbers, and then they'll be reversing those forecasts. Um, what does it mean for us trading it? Well, it just shows you that the market may be getting a bit over expectant from the Bank of England now. It's the usual boat running. Um, so they're all running the other way. They were all less do less hawkish before the CPI data. Now they're getting to extreme hawkish uh, in the CPI data. So what that means for us is going into the next piece of data or the Bank of England, we know potentially which way the market is leaning. If we know that, we know where the biggest risk lies for us trading. If everyone's expecting hikes and they don't hike, you know you're going to see a bigger reaction uh, downside move to the pound than an upside move if they do hike. Um, this is why, as much as I take the mick out of these forecasts, I want to know what they are because I want to know what the market is thinking um, so that when we get to those big trading moments, I know where my risk is and I know whether I want to be on the other side of that trade uh, to where everyone else is. So we may laugh and joke, but it does serve an important um, thing, keeping an eye on those forecasts. Um, over to the Fed. Um, Walla says uh, they don't want to halt hikes until it's clear inflation is tamed. Whether the Fed hikes or skips in June is going to hinge on the data. Um, it's concerned about a lack of progress on core inflation. Uh, more loosening of the very tight labour market needs to be seen to help take the heat off high inflation. Um, does not expect data in the next couple of months to make it clear whether the terminal interest rate has been reached. Um, so a little bit of fence sitting there from him. Um, Fed's Bostick, uh, we've heard from him quite often beginning of the week, uh, says the best case is the Fed won't mull a rate cut until well into 2024. <clears throat> um, Fed minutes were out um, overnight or last night. Um, no real shocks coming out of that. Nothing we didn't uh, know already. Uh, they showed officials are pretty split on support for more hikes. Um, they wanted to stress the data dependent approach uh, and uh, make clear that cuts are unlikely. Um, officials said they saw a timely debt limit uh, as essential. Uh, so getting that resolute resolved um, as essential. Um, I still think that may be a factor behind what they do in June. If we do have a resolution, I think they're clear for a hike if that's what they want to do. Um, if we have hit the debt limit, um, I think that might tip them into uh, a pause um, if they're not there already. Um, something else to keep an eye on, Fitch has placed the US uh, AAA rating on uh, negative watch, saying that the US AAA may be cut um, based on all this debt stuff. It still expects a resolution to the debt limit before the X date. Um, now, why is this important? Well, if you get your rating cut, um, investors, again, charge a premium for borrowing money or lending you money. Um, so it can push up costs uh, for the US. It's not going to be, uh, you know, the end of the world if they cut the rating um, based on the on heading towards uh, the debt ceiling. Obviously, a default is a, a different matter altogether, but we're not expecting that anyway. Um, but it just could cause a little bit of waves because, you know, some investors also, they only want to hold investments that are AAA rated. So if you're now down to a AA plus or whatever they call it. Um, investors will exit out of some of those investments and go into others that are AAA. So it can cause some flows getting moved around. Um, so if that happens, keep an eye on that. Um, but it'll be a secondary move uh, because that will mean we've probably uh, hit the debt limit and we're at an impasse and we're facing shutdowns. And on the good old debt stuff, oh, I love all this. Um, US House Speaker McCarthy said they're sending negotiators to the White House to finish things. Um, there's a number of places we are still far apart. Uh, I think we can make progress today. Uh, this is yesterday's headlines. Um, we can get to yes on a debt deal. Um, later on, he came out uh, 
and spoke to reporters saying they could get a debt agreement in principle this weekend. Uh, and apparently some, uh, all the people involved uh, in both houses have, have been put on. They've been told they can go home for the uh, long weekend because it's a half day tomorrow afternoon. Um, but they're put on notice, uh, 24 hour notice that they may be required to vote on the deals or, or whatever. So a little bit more positive on that front uh, from the comments. We'll see what we get later on today. As we know, it could all change in a heartbeat. Um, do you think we're edging closer still? Uh, closer to committing suicide from this stupid <laughs> thing. No, um, I mean, I don't know how far they want to take it, but uh, I've said before many times, this really no way any of these politicians want to have it on their watch that they um that the u.s defaults on debt i mean could we get a, another government shutdown like uh, 10 years ago yeah we could which again i don't see what it what purpose it serves apart from uh, you know bl trying to blackmail one side tries to blackmail the other to get what they want but uh, you know one side says we have to cut spending and the other side says, no, we just uh, raise the limit and uh, we keep going. So, you know, cutting spending is actually the right thing to do. But, you know, how do you do it without uh, um, in, inflicting um, tremendous political damage? You can't. And that's that's the, uh, the question that all governments face, not just in the U.S. and all politicians face. face. You know, how, how do we to effectively buy votes without uh, creating a problem to the economy. Well, you can't. You know, you have you will eventually pay the price, which is a very uh, a weaker currency. Uh, and it's um, and I personally don't see with a trillion dollar plus deficit every year um, how they can plug that gap without borrowing more. I really don't see how they're going to do it. So, I yeah. my opinion is still the same. They're going to raise that limit. Maybe they do some uh, spending cuts here and there, but really, overall, they're probably going to increase spending over the next years. So, um, yeah, cut spending and increase the defense budget at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a um, a tricky situation. I think it's going to get resolved when I don't know. I mean, if I knew, I would be a billionaire. So. Um, I, I think the, the risk of a default on debt is totally exaggerated. I think it's less than it's one percent. I really do. So um, you know, I look at these bills that expire in the end of June, and uh, they've gone up from you know what was it four and a half percent? They're up to God knows how much now. I think that's an incredible opportunity to get some really really nice yield. Yes, you have the danger of getting zero back, but I think that's a 1% chance. So, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and, you know, we've got this uh, potential 1st of June deadline now, which is only um, taking into account the bank holiday. It's only five days away. Um, so, you know, they, they, they are running out of time to get this done. Um, this X date, 1st of June, is not set in stone. It might run to something like the 8th. Um, so we could get a bit of a, the 11th hour might be uh, the 31st of May, but that 11th hour might get pushed forward by a few days um, if they run it to the 8th of June. It's it's sometime in that period. I don't think they can nail it down. It's when the, when they actually run out of cash. Uh, that would be the X date. Um, but yeah, they've got uh, only got a few more days to go, so we are looking to get there. But I based just based on these comments from last night, um, I was 70 30 on a deal getting done. I'm probably more 75 80 percent on a deal getting done, uh, based on that comments. As we, I, I agree on today. that, I do agree. So, as we say, you know, that could all change. We could get some comments later on saying that uh, they're still far apart, no one's willing to budge, and uh, we'll go back into reverse. But anyway, we can only trade what we know when we get it. Um, what isn't looking so hot is that uh, Russia's Shoigu said that uh, the decision to retaliate in the nuclear sphere comes amid a dramatic escalation of threats on the Western borders. Um, this is all to do with uh, that incursion uh, or by uh, Ukrainian uh, saboteurs, as Russia put it uh, in Belgrade. Um, saboteurs, so well. Saboteurs, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, apparently, Russia put up uh, a picture of a couple of Humvees that got captured or uh, 
from this this failed incursion or what they're calling it and uh, it's been completely picked apart by people saying it's been <laughs> it's been staged um you know the these uh humvees have been loaded off a, off a flatbed lorry and put into this ditch um because there's no there's no dirt on the tires there's no dirt on the bumper oh, where it would dear, have oh dear. <laughs> it's a big old mess but uh take it as you will but uh Russia just up in the uh, rhetoric there, bringing nukes back into the uh, into the conversation. Uh, let's hope we don't go there. Otherwise, no one will give a monkey's about the debt ceiling in the US. We'll all be uh, <laughs> we'll all be piles of ashes on the ground. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, and I'll I'll be out of my trades definitely by then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've got uh, any uh, headlines or anything you want to. Uh, Chuck in still before we crack into the charts? Not really. Uh, it's it's been relatively quiet. I mean the um, the the big um, the data wise was German GDP today, which came in at negative point three. Expected cut to to rise from negative point four to negative point one. Uh, so um, it's not looking good. The uh, GFK number also slightly worse than expected so it's i think the situation is, is we're getting to the point where we're going to be pausing pretty much everywhere and uh, yeah. no matter how the central banks talk the the hawkish talk um as long as inflation is not really stubbornly high i think the uk is probably one uh standing out in terms of inflation that is higher than than the rest i think the the fed's going to be pausing and uh, you know the question is pause and hike again i think once they pause it's probably done so um, yeah. that's where we're heading, I think. And um, inflation continues to creep down. And the other thing I wanted to say is this. Let's say um, you have an um, economic environment where, you know, the price of goods is X. Everything is flowing. Everything is fine. And then you get a, a, um, a black swan event. Let's say Russia invades Ukraine. And then everything becomes more expensive and, uh, you know, oil goes up, the price of everything goes up, you know, corn, wheat, everything. So all the products that you generate become more expensive. At some point, you get to a new equilibrium level where things, you know, used to cost, I don't know, a dollar a, a per, per kilo to bring in. Now it costs two. Um, but you do get to an equilibrium. Once you get to that point, inflation goes down to zero. Does, is that good? Of course not. But that's, I think, all else unchanged, and the central bankers know this, all else unchanged, inflation will creep down to zero. Why? Because the jump in inflation was not because, hey, everything's going great, everybody has jobs. Okay, they do. Uh, every has, everybody has loads of disposable income. They're buying everything left, right, and center. Uh, no, the opposite is happening. Disposable income is dropping. People are borrowing more and more on the credit cards to buy stuff. So yeah. if, if, if the case was that everything is going up because demand is really booming, because the world is great, then yes, inflation is going to stay higher for longer. But we've had a black swan event that shot everything higher. At some point, the markets find an equilibrium with the new supply chain situation, with everything, and then inflation goes down. I'm not going to say down to zero, but you know what I mean. So yeah. we have to keep in mind that this is the end game um, as months go by. And every month that goes by, we subtract a high inflation month. We add in a low inflation month. So that's going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping. Just just need to keep that in our minds. And this is what they, unfortunately, this is what the central banks are looking at. As if the, if inflation goes down to 2% tomorrow, they're going to say, oh, amazing success. We've made it. It was us. No, it wasn't you. Anyway, sorry, I, I tend to rant a little bit, um, but yeah, just wanted to say that one more time. Have I been disconnected? No, no, you're here, mate. You're oh, okay, here, mate. okay, sorry. Um, sorry. By the way, we have, right. we have Greg as well here, so I'm sure yeah, he's Greg's waiting here. to uh, bring him in, uh, bring him in, yeah. in the moment. Um, but you're right, we say, I mean, you know, if you look at it in the context of mathematical terms, let's say... Uh, your one dollar a kilo, whatever the example it uses now, two dollars. If it's taken a year to go up a hundred percent, so it's gone up ten percent one month, nine percent, blah 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 blah, and a year later it's hundred percent. If it goes down fifty percent, if you see inflation of minus fifty percent in two three months, and then it stops, you say, well, we've seen minus fifty percent, great. Well, you're still fifty cents higher than you were. The prior year when it, things were a buck. Now your yeah, equilibrium is one dollar fifty, even yeah. with my 
fifty percent inflation. So, you know, like you say, we're not going to be getting down unless we see deflationary style numbers coming in, i.e., negative CPR readings. Um, we're just going to be sitting at higher levels than we were a year, eighteen months ago. Um, and you know, things aren't going to go back to the way it is uh, the way it was then. And everyone just has to hope that. that uh, your wages catch up with it to uh, match that equilibrium. Um, but that's the way it works, unfortunately. Yep. Um, anyway, quick look at the price. I'll just run through a couple, then I'll bring in our Wizard of Waves, um, who's going to uh, wow us with his charts and stuff. Um, already mentioned um, Dollar China, keeping on this one. The pullbacks have been very limited. The close support is really probably around this uh, 705 area, 0405 area at the moment. Um, I'm still looking to see if we get a move down to 703s. If it holds, I want to try and add back into my long position uh, for another run. But it depends where we come from. If we come from here, I'll be inclined. If we've had a rally up to, uh, you know, 710, 712, and then pull back to there, I might be less inclined because that will be quite a big move and probably some news behind it. Uh, so it's all about where we come from if we make that test. Um, Aussie dollar. Um, a lot of people in our room were looking at this yesterday um, for a bit of a long down here. This was an area, as you know, I've been looking at for a while um, down at this fib. Um, it's been a prior traffic area. As you can see, going back to this period in 2022, late 2022, um, I, I was looking at maybe getting out all my shorts and turning long. Um, I've kept my shorts. I took a bit off into this level uh, at 50. And I waited until maybe the test of 20s because I thought that might be a bit stronger um, than starting at uh, in the 40s. And that actually proved to be the case. But at the moment, we're not bouncing very strongly. We're not getting back up through this 45. So we've got a bit of a decision to make here. Um, are we going to get back up through there or are we going to go through the 20s? At the moment, I would say on balance, we're probably going through the 20s. Um, on this one just because the, the bounces are very weak but if we find we get a decent amount of time spent banging off this level um that will likely change that around and maybe we'll get a, a break back up but you know 2025 pips is not a lot something's going to happen here um on balance i think it's going lower even though i'm still even though i've got separate long down here at 27 um it's pretty tight pretty small i'm keeping my short position my core short um, but I think maybe on balance, we're going to be heading lower. If it goes the other way, fine. I'll uh, take some uh, of my longs off. Uh, I've already taken a little bit off this morning, 12 pips, just to put it in the bank. Um, and I'll lock up my stop on the short and see what we want to do thereafter. If we do move up, going to be looking at this uh, 65, 50, 60 area. Um, that's the first resistance area, and then up towards 85, 90. Um, dollar yen it's had the break I'm all out of my long term short position that one uh, has been busted I've draw, I drew the line at 139.50 we've gone through there um, what's done is done I've had enough um, I'm not going to give it any more on that one I still favour this being a decent short um, but I'm going to have to pick my time again um, because we're completely ignoring what's going on um, with all things Japan this debt stuff and everything else is taking front seat in all this um let's get a little bit of a cleaner chart going on here there we go so we made the move out of this 138 area that is still going to be the main support point from me um we're nudging up we did go above the 50 fib um but we're just sitting on it right at the moment so are we going to get a clean move above um as you can see there it's also prior resistance and it was also a resistant point and a break point going back into last year. So this area is pretty important. If we get a close above there, um, we're going to be on for 140, uh, most definitely. So for now, you know where you're at. 138 is your main support area. Um, and we're looking at these highs now to see if we hold them or break them. Um, again, I see no reason why this trend is changing at the moment. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens if we get a resolution to this debt stuff. Uh, so the trend is your friend. Um, as you can see there, we might get some support coming in around uh, 138, 80, 90 uh, initially before anything down towards 
138 and a quarter, and then that 138 level from there. Um, Euro sterling, another one that's looking a bit iffy, um, particularly to the downside. We had that move on the CPI data um, yesterday, um, got back into the box, if you like. We're having another move below this 70 area. Um, so to me, it key, it's keeping the bearish pressure on this one. We can't get above that 87, 15, 20 area. This low needs to be watched now around the uh, 49s, 50s. If we get down to there, but we hold it, let's say around 50, 55, that will suggest we may be starting to build a bit of a short-term bottom because that'll mean the buyers are protecting their buys from this area just a bit higher up, maybe stepping up uh, 55, 60, that sort of area. If we make a new low, even by a few pips, again, I suggest that we're going to be seeing far lower levels um, on this one. Okay, Gregor, let's uh, get you in, mate. You all uh, ready to rock? He's unmuted, but I cannot hear him. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Ah. My mic there was muted. Hey. I'm here take always ready, so. Sorry, mate? I'm here always ready. Always ready. He's Excellent. Always ready. Yeah. Do you want to take the uh, screens, mate? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so um, I will firstly start with US dollar. <clears throat> now, I think that US dollar is still only in a temporary recovery. I know that this, as you all both talked about, US debt ceiling that is driving these prices. And I'm just wondering what will happen with the US dollar when these things will settle down in June. Um, I think that this could actually, if we have current sentiment that is driving this price action, then obviously when these events will be behind us, I think that again, cycles may change. And if I look back, uh, I still think that the major top for the US dollar has been formed last year and that we are now just in a corrective phase here. Uh, if you look on a big time frame, we are actually stabilizing at this trend line. So Obviously, we will not see a straight, uh, straight move to the downside, but I think that the US dollar index will remain in this very big channel, but in uh, the next few months or years, we could actually be trading towards the lower side of this channel. But temporary, we are just uh, in the middle of this higher degree bearish trend. Um, and I think that the very strong resistance could be seen anywhere between 105 to 107. So we are closely getting into this area. Um, I'm seeing stocks also coming to the downside this week. So clearly there is some room for more gains. But uh, if Fed, as Stelios mentioned earlier, and other central banks are really going to sooner or later to be on hold, um, then maybe that's the timing when stocks will find a support and dollar resistance at the same time so this is what i'm um, actually looking at uh seeing only temporary dollar recovery but let's say maybe summer will be somehow slow but then in september i think that new cycles uh will kick in looking at the aussie dollar um i still think that there can be some very strong support coming in play 78.6 percent fib and the 61.8 percent could should be levels to watch uh, during this summer. But for now, if we're just trying to focus on these substructures, keep in mind that I'm tracking a free wave drop here. And wave C is an impulsive wave. So this was a corrective wave, obviously, just a pause on within ongoing weakness. And wave C, if it's impulsive wave, then should be structured by five sub waves. Looking here, looks like that there is not five waves down right uh, into the wave C, right? So more weakness, in my opinion, here could be seen. Watch out for maybe some short-term rallies towards 65, 60. That was the previous low. Could be a very nice resistance, but clearly trend is down as long we are trading below this uh, wave to swing high. Uh, so for now, as is still trading to the downside, obviously it has a lot to do with with China, as you said yourself, Ryan, I think you covered the dollar Chinese yuan. And even this one looks like that it has some room for more upside. Again, tracking a higher degree, higher degree free wave recovery. Okay, so for now, if we look closely here, we don't have this five subways within this wave C. 
which should be structured by five subways before we can say that this current impulsive uh, recovery came to an end of the higher degree free wave movement that I'm tracking up from start of the year. So still room for more gains, but I think that 61, 78.6% could be again, very interesting for limited upside when this current trend will complete. So for now, even this one suggests the dollar uh, strength could resume and obviously this equals to more uh, weakness on gold, more uh, at least in the short term and also that stocks could uh, see some more downside. We have a long weekend ahead because uh, it, there are holidays in Monday uh, in Europe as well. So I think that maybe there will be new short, uh, new sellers on equity showed up potentially because there's too much risk involved and this could easily maybe cause some more uh, upside or at least hold the support for the US dollar. Um, also, <clears throat> if we look at New Zealand dollar, uh, we've been tracking this one very closely and looks like it's a very nice ongoing, again, bearish sequence. But keep in mind that maybe things are not so bad as it looks right now here, uh, because again, this is only wave C of the higher degree correction that it's underway since start of um, of the year okay so the most important will be to watch the price action what will happen when we will have these five waves down that's when i think that again market could be at the end of this current very strong bearish cycle which ob obviously is uh, is making some extensions lower but again it's most likely going to be just a correction because if you look here on a daily time frame uh, you can actually see a very nice, beautiful pattern. There's always that markets will not just move straight to the upside and just continue straight higher um, here after 2022 has ended. So obviously we have some corrective stages. So I think that we are now in a corrective stage, but just searching for the support anywhere around 61.8% would be ideal for this wave C to complete the current seconds. And again, this potentially could happen maybe after summer looking at these patterns and combination with the time and also considering that maybe that's later this year, this really Fed will be on hold and that's when things may change a lot. Um, also looking at uh, the S&P 500. Um, <clears throat> so looks like that, that move around 4,200 was a bit overcrowded trade. I mean, everyone expected a massive break higher. So obviously the opposite happened. And uh, normally that's the case when you have this happening in a fifth wave because it's the final lack of the higher degree impulse. And that's when a lot of traders will become very optimistic, but that's when actually sentiment can shift around because if something is just overextended, over optimistic, uh, usually the opposite occurs. So I think that we are now in a corrective stage, very big level. Now, even if you just ignore the Elliott waves for a second and uh, watch out for the pivot level, I think that for uh, 4,070, that's a very big, important level because it's been important here since March. So firstly, it was here a very nice um, resistance. Then we broke higher. It was a support. So actually, it still can be a support as long as we are above that level. But since we can count completed five waves up, I think that we are now in an ABC correction because impulses, remember, are in five waves. Corrections are in three waves. So I will not turn bullish or turn, look higher for uh, on S&P or on stocks in general until I see this ABC formation to the downside completed. So ideally it could be around four, uh, 4060, maybe even lower around 4000, which is obviously also very important psychological level and the 61.8% as well, okay? Um, so it's also something that we have to keep an eye on. Uh, also what I have left here, uh, dollar yen also coming into some ranges here, but still think that 100 and maybe even 42 could be seen. We had some, uh, some resistance here that was a swing high. You are now at this level. Uh, so clearly we are moving into this zone, uh, but since we have this more room for more upside, I think on dollar index, I just assume that even dollar yen will become a little bit stretched to the upside here. Uh, the only thing that looks somehow maybe supportive for 
for this contract if the correlations will come back to normal is maybe the crude oil um we have seen a very nice bounce here but obviously opec and each countries are looking to stabilize the prices so everyone is fine with the cuts um but so far we are not seeing any major move to the upside just yet we have seen a retest of the upper channel here uh so i think that very important key support still remains around 70 dollars per barrel uh so as long as we are above that spike here that's actually that's already obviously a july contract i think that this trend could resume higher uh, because if you look here on this daily chart uh, i think that we have a very major important key support level here if you look back for it was important for the last two years okay so we really haven't seen any um any move to the downside rather just a strong re uh, reaction higher so i think that price will try to stabilize here uh for this year and maybe just chopping around but uh if we break this upper trend line i think that higher degree correction could actually be in the card so i still think that at, at some point even 90 dollars to 100 dollars uh, per barrel could be seen when this wave b will really start kicking in okay so thank you mate awesome thank you so that's it from me thank you very much thank you very much gregor for popping in and uh sharing your waves with us um you can see gregor uh what's your what's your twitter handle mate chuck that in the uh in the gregor Horvath fx yeah gregor Horvath fx yeah thank you, you. Chuck it in, the, yes. in the comments there mate uh if you've got it to hand while we continue um then uh, guys and girls can greg you there um obviously come see him in the chat room as well um right just to look at uh, a couple of, of pairs as well um kiwi keeping an eye on as gregor mentioned there looking where's the floor um that's probably a question on a lot of your lips um where's the bottom in the kiwi um we're carving through the levels we're carving through the prior support areas uh which is never a good sign for when trying to find the bottom we've got another one coming in um oh i've got to share my screen haven't i so yeah i was about to say there. that yeah can you see that all right mate not yet not yet oh, no it says yeah try again is it the same bug where you uh stop sharing and then you can't share again yeah, yeah we, we can't see it all right mm. let me just stop sharing Wrong. do you want Bloody me to hell. show something um let me just try it one more time why does it do that? It's a pain in the butt, I tell you. Usually when I share, then you can share. So Go hold on. on. You, you take it Let me take uh... that. Let me take that. And now you try taking the screen. Okay. I can see the screen now. Yeah, it's mine though. Let's see what if Ryan can share. Yeah. No. Gregor broke it. It's Greg has fault. broken it. What are you done, Greg? Are, are you sure you have the right screen? Because it says that you are sharing your screen. You have multiple yeah, yeah. Screens. We've ah oh, it's come up. It's come up now. It took a while. Yeah. It took a while. Okay. Ryan, oh, you muted. <laughs> Ryan, asked to unmute. Yeah. It's a hello. Hello. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. It works. Oh, there we go. Oh, I don't know what's going on there. It's a pain in the butt. It, it shuts my microphone down when I share the tab because usually I just share my whole screen. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Anyway, well, at least we found a workaround for it anyway. So, yep. <laughs> anyway, talking about the Kiwi and uh, yeah, Greg is right, you know, looking for where the, the support's coming in. We, we've been through some of the various support levels, so it's not looking too hot. We've got another one, little one round about this area here um 60 and a half um really for me it's going to be about this fib you know if we if we get down to that fib it's going to be a big psychological level around about the six thousand um so 60 25 could be a bit of a stall point there um but you know really it's all about what the price is doing on this fall down it's not bouncing at all um and that's stick it on an hour see that better um so bounces are being limited to the breakpoints so far um we've got this other break point here so keep an eye on that if we start to get resistance up against this 60 86 60 90 area called maybe 61 just taking into account those bits there 
then it's going to keep the downside pressure in play. So if you've, if you've got your, your uh, butcher's gloves out, as Kay likes to call them, and you're thinking of catching knives, you've got to be careful of your resistance points. You know, I highlighted that in Aussie dollar a, a moment ago. You know, we've had this break in this zone. We found support, but it can't get 25, 30 pips higher. Um, that's always a negative sign if you're looking to catch the knife on these things. So if you are trying to pick the bottoms, make sure you're keeping your stops tight because if you're wrong, you don't want to be 50, 60 pips offside. Um, you only need to be 10, 15, 20 pips offside to be wrong on those sorts of trades there. Um, EuroCAD, I know some of you guys like to have a look at this one. Um, not one I trade a lot, but there's a big level here um, that we've looked at time and time again. You may remember back late last year into this year, the big 46 and a half level. Well, we've messed around, we messed around, and now we're holding below it once again. Uh, we've had another move up towards it. Um, we are finding support down into the 45s. So you've got uh, 100, 130, 40 pips to play with here. Um, doesn't matter your bias. You've got two levels. We can't get through 145. We're not getting back above 146 and a half. So if you want to trade this one, you can trade between the goalposts, shorts into that level, longs into this level, or you can look to go with a potential break of either side. Um, but look for this one to maybe range for a while. Um, as we like to say, always more ways than one to skin a cat on that one. Um, right, I think we'll... Uh, oh, you want to look at Euro-Dollar? Yeah, let's have a look at Euro-Dollar, Mike, before we shut up shop. So here we are, getting a move. 107, that's my level. Uh, we've got down to... Where are we? 107.13. 107.14 is the low at the moment. Again... The pressure's still on. We're breaking through the levels. We're breaking through the fibs. This part of the trend is changing. We obviously still have the bigger trend, and I'll, uh, I'll, I haven't got the fibs on for this yet, um, but just to give you a quick a rough idea. Let's get it there to there. Just roughly. So you see this fib isn't really valid until we're getting way down to here, to the, near the 105s. So I'm not looking at that just yet. Um, so I'll keep that off my chart for now. Um, but we are breaking down. The pressure is still on, still looking bearish. And then look, this is why the 107 is so big. It's been a former SNR area. It marked that range period that we had between 105 and 107. Um, I would be, I will be considering longs down into this on a first test um maybe from about 107.10 i'll maybe scale in some small positions again i won't give it much room um there'll be a stop maybe below just uh 106.80 uh, on that um, but if there's an area where it might bounce this is the strong level that i like to look at i've been watching for a while um and it'll keep it'll decide whether this trend is really fully broken which breaking the 61.8 it looks like it is um, but let's see on the longer term whether this one becomes a big level to hold. As for your resistance, pretty clear. Um, 107.60, I traded long off here yesterday. Um, got some pips away up there. Knocked out on the rest. And here we are below and finding it as resistance. So that's where your level is. 107, 107.60. Are we going to move in between now? Again, same thing as EuroCAD. If we, if we look to break below 107, then we're heading lower. If we hold here, we need to get above 107.60. So some decent pips for you to play around in there. Again, look for a break up. Break up will take us lightly back to the 108 level uh, on that one. Up here, wants to have a quick look at cable. Well, you wouldn't think that everyone's hyped up their rate expectations for the pound, would you, the way this one's going, uh, which again shows you what is the main driver. Um, of the pound or of cable at the moment it's everything that's going on in the dollar um, so again this one's coming we've had a little test the 38.2 fib down here 123 40s just nicked a little low underneath the fib but you know we're not going to call it a hold uh, or we're not going to call it a break for a few pips as you can see former resistance area um, and now it's showing up as support again was support there a little bit of wishy-washy through here, but it's bounced uh, pretty decent. 
Where's he got to go to? Well, it needs to get back above 124 for starters. Um, and then 124.50, that old level that we've been watching for a few weeks now. So it's made a bit of a bottom. It's held the fib, give or take. So that's your level. Um, if we come back to this level pretty quickly, you might want to be a bit worried about it. If Again, if you're trying to catch the knife here. If you're short, been short from up uh, top, running this trend lower, um, that's where you want to be thinking maybe about taking profits. Um, but if we do get a quick move back down here, um, there's a high chance we break and then we'll be looking at uh, this old fib level around about the big figure um, on that one. But as you can see, the short term trend is down. Go with the flow, as we like to say. Um, you're short at the top, Abir. Very nice, mate. Um, make sure you're taking some profits, please. Um, you don't want to give it all back up and uh, manage your stops as well behind it. Um, do you think US GDP later will be a market mover? We've got GDP later, have we? Oh, didn't even know. Probably not, I would say. Mike, uh, is this another, it's another revision. It's a second estimate. Um, really, only if there's a big variation is it going to move the market. But the market pretty much knows what it's getting. And each print we get from GDP has less and less uh, reaction. So, Really just look for a big variation. You know, if, if it goes from uh, the last reading of 1.1%, of if it goes to 0.5% or something like that, um, then we'll get a market move. Or if it jumps to, you know, 2%. Um, but if it's in around that 1.1%, you know, 1.3, 0.9, something like that, I can't see us getting uh, much of a reaction for it. Um, what I would say is keep an eye on the jobless claims coming up later because it is just starting to edge up a touch. Um, we're not seeing uh, anything close to 300s in the jobless claims, but it is just uh, moving a bit higher. So we'll keep an eye in case that starts jumping uh, up on that one. And I think unless you guys and girls have got anything you want to uh, throw in quickly, we might call that one a day. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you to Gregor and Stelios for your contributions today, as always. Uh, and thank you to our viewers for coming to the Flow Show and supporting us here. Thank you, Ryan. Have a great day all. Cheers, Stel. And uh, we shall see you all tomorrow. Just a quick reminder again, there will be no Flow Show or other Forex Analytics shows on Monday because it's a US uh, and pretty much global bank holiday on Monday. Um, and the US bond markets are closing early tomorrow as well. So we should get a, a quiet Friday. Um, but bear in mind, it will be value day end of month because of that bank holiday. So the fix, the London fix, 4 p.m. London could be a bit spicy if everyone wants to get their stuff done before packing up early. Anyway, that's that. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Ryan. Bye-bye, everybody. Cheers, mate. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.